Hello Stampers, my name is Linda Bettinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Denver, Colorado. I'm so glad you could join me this afternoon. Um, I've had a couple days uh, that I missed making a video and so I thought I would come on today and uh, try to get a little bit caught up. Life just intervenes sometimes and you don't have quite the time you thought you did. So uh, today I have kind of a fun card for you. It is both a way to use the cutouts for Pressed Petals Flower Designer Series paper and a fun fold. And I thought I would show you, mostly what I want to show you is how to cut the paper to get this fun fold. And then I have several samples that I made, we'll make one today, and then I have some to share with you of some other samples that I've made using either the Press Petals cutouts or this um, fun fold. So let's just get started. Okay, here is my card. Now, what I've done is I've used the Pressed Petals Designer Series paper and I've used one sheet of paper and I this I got from a lady who is a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and she calls herself TX Stampin' <laughs> I wrote it down TX Stampin' Sharon TX Stampin' Sharon and she must live in Texas is the only thing I can think of for the TX but she showed this card and the way it works is the card opens up like this and then opens up like that. The difference is this isn't attached any other way. This is all part of the way you cut out the paper. So there you have it. So in this one, I put a hello and I used my pressed petals. That's This is the one we're going to make today. Remember the pressed petals um, uh, washi tape? And I used some of the cutouts, so this is part of one of the smaller cutouts in the uh, designer series paper. Then I, on this one, I used Bloom and Grow, and I put this beautiful little floral piece right here on Mary Merlot, because Mary Merlot is very complementary to the pressed petals and to, these, um, to this uh, washi tape. And then I further opened the card this way, used some more of that designer series paper, stamped a little image here, and thank you from the bottom of my heart. And that flower, and so this flower and that stamp set is there, and the little hello also comes from this bloom and grow. Now, one of the things you could do is orient this this way so that you opened it this way and, well, you probably want to have it be on this other side, but then you could also open up the card and have it be um, a vertical. Uh, but on this one, I did it this way. So I'm going to show you how to make this card. The most important part about all of this is showing you how to cut your paper, and I'm changing it up a little bit. I cut this off short and I wasn't very happy with that in the end, so I've extended everything and um, made it just a little bit bigger and I eliminated this little piece of paper here, although we might want to put that back. We'll see. Anyway, um, so what I used, and on this one I used Whisper White, and on the one I'm going to do for you today, we're going to use Very Vanilla. And the first thing you're going to do with this piece of paper, and when you think about it, um, oftentimes we end up using almost a whole piece of paper anyway if we're going to do something like this because we have these two pieces this way and we use a layer here and often I will use a layer on the top. So I don't know that this is really much different in that I'm going to use three pieces of this and you're going to end up with a pretty good sized piece that you can use to cut this piece out from the inside. So it really doesn't use up much more paper than you would use ordinarily. Okay, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on my trimmer at four and a quarter. And I'm going to move my cutting blade out of the way. And I'm going to score this piece of paper really well at four and a quarter. And then I'm going to turn it this way and I'm going to score it at five and a half. Now, let's bring this back in so you can see what I'm doing. So this piece of paper here is um, going to be like this. So that's what we're going to cut away, except I'm going to go all the way to the end. So when you look at it, it's not very much different. And the orientation is on the 11 inch side here. And this is the eight and a half. And there's my eight and a half on this side here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut from here along that line down past this place where the two score lines meet and I'm going to cut in three quarters of an inch and three quarters of an inch from the bottom and cut all of that away. And you're left with a pretty good sized piece of paper here that you can do something with. Okay, so we're going to put this in the cutting channel back at five and a half. And I'm going to make a little tick mark on my piece of paper down three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to do it out here so I can see it past my blade. So three quarters of an inch right there. And then I'm also going to measure three quarters of an inch up from the bottom. And get that tick mark put in there. Okay, so now I know exactly how far down I want to cut. And if I put this on the five and a half inch line here, I know that I will be making a straight cut and I can see my little tick mark right here on there and one right here. So I'm just going to bring this down, cut past that line, and come down to, didn't put my tick mark out far enough. Looks like I need to go just a tiny bit past there. Okay, so my advice to you is when you put your tick mark, do it out past your blade so you can see where to stop. And maybe it would be wiser to put it on this side so that you could see, let me try putting one on this side for this other one and see if that helps it at all. Didn't have this problem when I did it before. I wonder what I did. Okay, I'm gonna put my little tick mark right there. And that is the place I'm going to pick this up now. And you can see I've come down on my tick mark, and I'm in just a little bit, so, okay. So now I'm going to come up from the bottom three quarters of an inch. Now I can see my tick mark perfectly well on this side, right to three quarters of an inch. Now what I'm going to do is cut this away this way. And so I'm going to put this at, that was going to be at four and a quarter is the center. And then I'm going to go three quarters of an inch to three quarters of an inch. And that should set me up to come to this cut line here. And I can tell because I'm coming to the score line here. That's pretty easy to tell. Okay. And so there I've cut away that piece. Now on this side, I'm going to do the same thing. 
Let's see, how do I want to set this up? I can set this up at three quarters of an inch off this edge and put my blade in and that should take that away. And it does. Okay, so there we've got our piece. Now, the, the only thing I would say is that I went back in through trial and error and I ended up having to cut away the score mark here. And the reason I did that is to allow this to fold, just like on a box. Sometimes, you see how much I'm cutting away? Just, oh, a sixteenth of an inch, maybe. And coming up to where I cut that panel, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And I think that is going to make this a little easier to fold. Now, the way I scored this and the way I cut it, um, it's going to, I'm going to fold on my score lines here. To have it come away this way, I'm going to um, fold this and then fold this. Now, my score lines suggest that I should be folding this way because this is the valley side and this is the mountain side. So let's just do that. We'll just make one that folds the other way. So, um, so my fold actually, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'm going to bring it up so you can see it. See how the fold goes just ever so slightly past where I've cut away that score line there. And that makes this fold a little bit easier because when I fold this one down, to fold my line, then because that top is cut just a little bit back, it allows this to fold over just a little bit easier. And you saw how much I took off. Um, it's like that amount. And what it does is it catches and moves the edge of the card in just a little bit, and you can see where the um, where the fold line is there, and it allows it to close just a little bit easier. And that will work, because the one thing I wanted to do this time was to have this piece go all the way across the card. So, and it doesn't really matter whether you open it this way, or like with this one, you open it this way. It just depends on how you cut it. So, here we go that is cut and I want you to take a look at what we did so this is the piece I cut away from here and this is the piece that I cut away from here now this has got a fold line on it but this panel is four and a quarter by five and a half. You can cut it down to four by five and a quarter. You can cut it, um, you can have it be a full front. You can do anything with it. And this is perfect for message strips. So uh, you don't really waste anything by doing this. So here we've got our piece ready to go. And so now on this, I have got my piece of designer series paper and what I used is I used this leaf pattern and plan to use well these are the other pieces that you need so first I have a piece that is four by five and a quarter I decided I didn't like the way this came all the way across and left an edge on that side so I just made this piece four by five and a quarter. This is going to go on here, and I think we can just go ahead and put that into place. Now my piece comes across here. This piece is going to go on here and leave that same border. So this piece is cut three and three quarters 
And that's how big we left this piece, three and three quarters by five and a quarter. And that piece is gonna go down just across there. In fact, that's pretty enough. You could put a message on that and be done. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put some snail down on this piece and get it put into place matching the border of the, that by the way, the piece behind is Mossy Meadow. There we have a nice piece there. I think this is just gonna look a lot better than this one. When I make my prototypes, I often change it the next time I make it just because I've learned something. <laughs> now this piece is a little bit bigger this or um, yeah, this piece is three inches by five and a quarter. And this is the piece that's going to go down here to create that little background piece. And the simplest way I have found to do that is to go ahead and put my snail down on my piece and then get it centered on this piece so that my margins are the same and if I center this on here so that I get the similar margin then I know roughly where this is going to need to go and I can make any minor adjustments that I need to on this piece to fit into place. That should be just about right. There we go. So now I've got my piece of Mary Merlot, which is what is this color, and it matches perfectly these petals for the uh, washi tape. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I cut two little circles here and this is where I started using the papers from the pressed petals cutaway pieces. And here are some of the cutaway pieces. And this piece I cut right from the center of there. This one is one and three quarters, I think. Yes, one and three quarters. And the one on this one was two inches and it felt like it was almost a little bit too big. So I cut this one a little bit smaller. Then I cut a one inch circle to have my um, washi tape anchor to this behind. And then I um, cut a piece that is two and three quarters just to give it some backing um, on here and add a, a third color using the back side of this paper. And you get this burlap paper there. And I kind of like the way it looked. And then on the inside of the card, I used it again to back this piece and bring that element back into the front. So. Um, I wasn't sure I wanted to use it, and I'm still not sure I do. Um, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and build my flower and get this piece ready to go, and then we'll decide if we want to use it or not. So uh, on this piece, what I'm going to do is just put some snail silicone mat here so I can put plenty of snail on here, get it covered, absolutely covered. All right, then you need your embossing buddy, which I have right here. And I'm going to put a little bit of my embossing buddy powder right down here on the edge of my silicone mat. And then I'm gonna leave it there. Now when you peel away these pieces there's a place on the washi tape where you can see a whole petal i think you can see that there yeah i think you can right here where you can see the whole petal and i'm going to just peel away that whole petal just like that 
Okay, and I'm going to leave my finger on the back here on the sticky part and I'm going to put some some powder to de-stick the end of that petal. And I'm going to set that on the inside of or on my little circle here. And that's how you place these down. I just love this washi tape and I haven't used it a whole lot, but some. And um, what I want to have unstuck is just kind of the very edges. And I do want the other pieces to stick. So I'm going to just work my way around my little circle here. And it's tedious, so I'm going to speed that up and I'll be right back. Okay, there you saw um, that uh, I put, I cut another piece, another circle here, inch and a quarter, and to glue it down to hold those petals in place. And I think what I'm going to do is put a couple of dimensionals on this piece, uh, this, this piece here, and get that put into place. Now I guess we're down to it. We have to decide if we want this piece on there or not. I think the problem is that it's not substantial enough. So I've got a piece of it here. I'm going to cut. Okay, after much gnashing about, I ended up cutting this piece two and three quarters to match this. And I cut it three and a half. And I think that feels a little bit more substantial to have my flower sit on. So I'm going to go ahead and put this piece down. And center that on here. There we go. And then this piece um, is all ready to be glued down, but I want to put my little floral piece in the center here. So I am going to um, put some tape down here and add that here. And then this piece is ready to go centered on this piece. And I think the end result is that this looks way more balanced than this piece. The next thing I need to do is add my little hello sentiment. And I have a little piece here that I cut um, about 5 eighths of an inch by 2 inches, which is a little bit bigger than I need. But I think that will help me get my hello put on there. And I did that in black ink. And I'm wondering now if I should do it in the Mary Merlot. Got my uh, pierce mat here, my poor beat up pierce mat. <laughs> Maybe I should get a new one. And I'm going to try and keep my head a bit out of the picture here. And so I'm going to do this close to me as I can and put my hello on this piece of very vanilla. And there's my hello. Now what I can do 
is just trim this back a tiny bit and then flag this end like I did on my card and there's my hello and so I think I like it better in Mary Merlot and I do like it going further across the card I think the whole thing looks a lot more balanced okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of snail to this end and I'm going to add a dimensional on this end to support this side I can put my hello there and put my dimensionals down and there the front of my card is done uh, I may add a few little pieces of bling yet to this uh, just because I don't like a card without sparkle <laughs> so the next thing I need to do is stamp here and I did that in black and I think I'm going to continue to do that one in memento because this is already Mary Merlot here and I want to make sure that this flower shows up so I'm going to ink that up really well and I'm going to set this up so that it is flat on my pierce mat and I could have done this stamping beforehand but I was so concerned about getting that on there straight and getting the margin right uh, it would have probably been better to do that okay here we go there's my stamp ready to go right across the center of that there oh gosh well I think this is where we take a black marker the 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 pointy end of the black marker and I draw my flower you know I think that's actually going to work never give up on a project <laughs> you can almost always find a way to fix it I don't think anybody's ever going to be the wiser that I filled that in so there we go that is my second layer here on my card I'll let that dry a little bit before I do anything else to it all right now the next pieces that I have for my card are the inside of the card and I have a piece that is four by five and a quarter out of this burlap looking paper then I have a piece of Mary Merlot that is cut uh, three and three quarters by five and then I have a very vanilla piece that's cut in a quarter inch from that three and a half by four and three quarters so that those all nest there and this one I did stamp the flower the end of the flower um, on the inside of the card so I'm going to ink that piece up and put down a little piece of scratch paper here and with this ink and these photopolymers you really need to ink and go straight to your project it has a tendency to kind of beat up a little bit on the um, on the images there we go all right so now this piece is ready to go mounted on here and then on to the other pieces of the card so let me get this 
put in place and I, we're nearly done with this card. Then I want to show you some of the other things that I did both with the cutouts and with this uh, fold. Then this piece is going to go backed on this burlap piece. And that whole assembly is going to go on the inside of my card. So there's lots of layers to this card, but it's such a pretty thing in the end. I think that's just fine. Sometimes lots of layers says richness. All right, so there we go. There is my card. And I do think I like this flower a little bit smaller than, than this one. I definitely like this going all the way across the page because I can maintain my borders that way all the way across. This one ended up looking like it was sort of haphazard. So then the next thing I need to do is figure out what bling I'm going to put on this card. And I'm just going to put rhinestones on here. I'm just going to add some rhinestones maybe to the centers on these little flowers in the center. That would be kind of a fun thing to do. Oh, and then I was going to add one more stamp to the inside. There we go. All right. And um, I'll add some bling to this one later. The other thing I was going to do is this hello was supposed to be followed up on the inside with a stamp that says, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I did do that in the same black that I did here. So I'm going to bring back my pierce mat and do that one last bit of stamping. I apologize for this being a little on the disorganized side. I thought I had everything pulled together, but things just move on my desk. What can I say? Okay, here we go. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. There we go. And that's a lovely, lovely thank you card. All right, so now let me move a few of these things out of the way and share with you how else I did this card. So this would be, this was the original that I did. This is the one we did today, which I have to say I like a lot better. And, oh, I just got a smudge on there. So this one looks like a normal card. And it, because the whole front of the, of the card is there. But when you flip this up, there's another piece here. And this opens this way. So what I really ended up doing is I cut away one panel. And in this case here, I can see I've got a little bit of a tail there. Um, but I'm going to bring this up so you can see that what I did was, you remember that piece I cut away so that it would fold easily? I did that on this one straight away, and you can see I cut down past the fold line about a sixteenth of an inch. That way when this folds, that whole assembly for that fold line can easily fold over the top of this and it folds perfectly. Now, on this one, I used this same flower, but I used a couple of my ovals to cut out that piece. I eliminated this piece from the background and this has enough of the brown from the wood on it that it, it I think, added the additional uh, color for color interest that I wanted. And while this doesn't match the Mary Merlot here, I think it offset the colors pretty well. So this one, uh, and I used a different stamp set. For this one, 
I used the waterfront um, stamp set and I used Friends Make the Good Times Better and the Hard Times Easier. And uh, this one is another one that I just love. Every little kindness makes the world brighter. And that would, would go well there too. So on this one, I put Friends Make the Good Times Better. And then on the inside, I used a whole piece of one of those cutaways. And I just trimmed it four by five and a quarter to fit on this panel. And then I put in Mary Merlot here and the Hard Times Easier because the color is here. Then on the inside, I just used Mossy Meadow, a strip of this paper, and put another piece of uh, very vanilla, so there's plenty of room to put a sentiment. But there we go, and that is yet another version of this. On this one, this was the simplest one that I made, and it is, I used the Mary Merlot cardstock to make a, a base, then I used Tropical Chic with Much Love and Thanks. And I put that here at the top right on the designer series paper. How simple is that? This card takes nothing to make, and yet it's beautiful. And then on the inside, I fussy cut out. This is one of the cutaways. I fussy cut out that little section there and put it here against a strip of that just to bring a little bit of color and life to the inside of the card. So that's another way I used one of the cut aparts. Um, and this last card is just a regular card, but I used the cutaways and I used this one. And I cut this, let me see what exactly I cut that down to. I cut that down to three and three eighths by three and a quarter. And then I backed that in blueberry bushel and used a little piece of ribbon and then raised that. And then I used soft suede to pick up the browns. And the pieces that I ended up cutting away from here, I fussy cut out the daisies and just moved them up so that they were right here in this. Now you could cut out more of the blue and move the daisies up in here and have more of the blue showing if you wanted to and use this background in blue. But I used Mossy Meadow and I ran it through my layered leaves. Sniff, sniff, that embossing pop, uh, folder is going away. I am just sick. I love that thing. I use it all the time. And on the inside, I just put Mossy Meadow, some um, very vanilla and a little piece of the blue ribbon to bring the outside in. But that's how I use some of the cutaways that are there. And then two of these cards then are this fold. And you can see that this piece can be cut from the piece that you cut away from here. So there's really not anything wasted on that at all. Um, thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel today. I do so appreciate it. And if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd love to be your demonstrator. Or you could join my team. Uh, joining Stampin' Up! is always a good deal. Uh, and if you're curious, my information is always listed below. For my prize draw for the month of May, why don't we make it any bundle of your choice out of the new catalog? You would be able to pick something out, and all it takes to be in my drawing is to place an order on my store, albedinger.stampinup.net, or you can get to it through my blog, www.inkandingenuity.com. The um, retired items from both the mini catalog and the annual catalog are available. I have links on my blog for you to download, and uh, that's at the www.inkandingenuity.com. And... Um, uh, they'll go fast, so if you see something you love out of the old catalog that's being retired, now's the time. Uh, my guess is by mid-month, uh, a lot of it will be gone. So uh, that's it for me. Thanks again for stopping by, and uh, I'll be back soon with more cards, more projects, and more tips. Bye! Bye.